Josh Shelley past 3.30 for a Wednesday afternoon. Bit of Mesa love, sweet love. Now I'm glad to be joined in the studio by the man himself, Freddie Lee. Now you've heard me mention his name a few times over the last sort of couple of days, but I'm actually glad that he's actually in the studio now. So what we're going to do, before we get into anything else, I want to play something from his brand new album at the moment. When I say a brand new album, it's kind of forthcoming. It hasn't quite finished yet, so I've been told, so I'm quite privileged ready to play this one. From his new forthcoming album called My Soul Intentions. Let's get into this track. I quite like it. It's called Book of Love. See what you think. There we have it, 3.35 for a Wednesday afternoon. Colourful Drive Time, track taken from his forthcoming album called My Soul Intentions. And a track called Book of Love. What do you think of that then? It's got a sort of gospel feel to it, but very, very uplifting. I quite like it. Freddie Lee, the man from America. The singer, songwriter, author and actor as well. Am I right on that, Freddie? Yes, you are. You're definitely wow. right wow. about The man of many talents and a jack of all trades as well. So I've got to say that to you because I'll tell you one thing, I've heard the albums and I've heard the tracks and I'm, I can't believe the voice coming out of you, mate. That's all <laughs> I can say. <laughs> that is some pretty cool stuff. Now you're from America, we know that. You came over to England. Now do you actually reside in England? Now I, I, I do at the moment, yes sir. You do at the moment. And that was from when? That was from, I think it was, a, if I'm right, because I did read a little bit of yourself, was it about sort of 1998, 2000 and something? When I first come over, during yeah. that time I was on like a work permit. Uh -huh. So it was like in 2008, 2009, I got my residence here. So you're basically, you, know, you are living in England. Yes, I you am. You are like one of us now, aren't you? I'm like one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Freddie Lee in the house. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for that. Listen, I want to know what you're doing now at the moment. Well, at the moment, you know, I'm still in the studio uh, completing uh, the album, My Soul Intentions. Yeah. Uh, which I'm nearing completion for the third single, which is titled uh, Love is Forever. Mm -hmm. I'm working alongside with the, the awesome 5 a.m. productions, Tony Bean, Colin Bassett, and Mr. Mikey Grant, for, uh, member of Musical Youth. Brilliant stuff. Musical Youth, did you say? Now, you yes. actually know him, don't you? Yes, I do. And how did that all come about? Well, uh, if I might add. Well, uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was in 2007, I had, I had a meeting with uh, 5 a.m. Productions, uh, uh, Miss Jesse Singh, my manager, who had put me in contact with them. Mm -hmm. And at the time, uh, I didn't have no idea that Mikey Grant was one of the persons uh, who were involved with the, the record label and the production mm -hmm. company. And that's how we came to, to meet Mikey and Tony and Colin was through our first meeting in 2007. Absolutely. Amazing. Now, you being a singer, actor, songwriter, as well as an author, I really, I'm going to touch on all these bits, okay? okay? But what I want to do, I want to get onto another record from you. Now, I know you've got a, a rec your debut album, which ah. was called, um, let's have a quick look here again, called Beyond Comprehension. Ah. Now, there is a story behind this, oh, which yeah. we are going to be playing, and we are going to be talking about that as well. Okay. But I'm very interested to know that, uh, I did ask you off air, what was your favorite cut of that album? And you mentioned, uh, Oh, How I Love You. Oh, yes. And uh, I heard it, and I, to, I must admit, I played the album, I love it to death, your oh, voice, and I said, I can't you. believe that voice is coming out of your mind. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I mean, Thank you, I mean why is this one your favourite? Well, if that, that song, it, it, it tells a whole lot about my situation. A lot of times people think, oh, it, it's about a female, but it's about something far greater than that. Mm. And in spite of the things that I was going through, I believe in a higher power that brought me to the point to where I am. And I'm just expressing my, my love and gratitude, saying, hey, I love you and thank you for bringing me out of that situation and placing me where I am now. And all that is uh, basically in this song that you've chosen, oh, which, yes. is gonna, which is taken off your debut album called Beyond Comprehension. Mm -hmm. This is Freddie Lee. And his favorite cut on the album called Oh, How I Love You. Just listen to this. <laughs>
we have here. What do you think of that then? For a Wednesday afternoon, colourful drive time with me, Brad Lee, Kaz in the studio as well, and we're joined by Freddie Lee, who you're hearing. And a track taken from his uh, debut album back in 2008 called Beyond Comprehension. This one's called Oh How I Love You. And this is favourite cut from that album. And I trust you have other cuts that you do like as well. Oh, but yeah. this one for you is your favourite, isn't yeah, it? It's one of my favourites. It's yes. one of your favourites. And oh, yeah. uh, the reasons, that, as, you, as you actually uh, mentioned beforehand, mm -hmm. it kind of is very spiritual. Yes, and quite spiritual. So, so, yeah, I mean, as I said, I've gone through the album, love it, like this one as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, But what I actually wanted to talk to you as well about, um, we're going to go further back. Okay. Now, you were born in Florida, obviously. Yes. And, uh, well, not obviously, really, but uh, born in Florida. <laughs> but there was a little town that I did actually read about, and I could not, uh, uh, sorry for my ignorance on this one, couldn't pronounce it. Could you just help me on this one? Uh, it's called Pahokee. But <laughs> for some people, phonetically, they say Pahokee. But it's actually uh, pronounced as uh, Pahokee. Pahokee. Yeah. And, do you, and, and, you, and what does that actually mean? It translates to grassy waters because it's, uh, it's connected to the Everglades down in South Florida. Uh -huh. Because if you travel farther south on like the Interstate uh, 27, yeah. and it goes straight into Miami, and you go down and you go to the Everglades, which then go on to Key West and so on and so forth. Ah, right. Yeah. Oh, cool, sir. Now, and as, as well as um, you are of uh, African American descendant, but oh, also um, mm -hmm. there is another part of you as well. That's, you've got an Indian heritage as well. Yes, and it's uh, again, mm -hmm. so excuse my English, <laughs> <on this line. laughs> I mean, go on, please. It's American Seminole, Seminole Indian, which my grandfather was Seminole Indian, and of course my grandmother was African American. Right, and uh, is, and uh, with your family, were they very musical? A musical in the sense of my parents, both parents sang, my, my mother and father, and my uh, brothers and sisters, but I'm the only person that decided to say, okay, I'm going to take this more serious than the rest, so. Now, was singing really, was that in the forefront of your mind when you was a, a, sort of a, a young kid, really, or a young guy? Um, was there anything else you wanted to do in life, apart from singing? Well, I thought I wanted to be an astronaut. Like I did as well? Nothing, I, no, no I, shame I, in that whatsoever. I, I thought that's what I wanted to do, but, <laughs> but then again, I, I saw something, and as a kid, I had to be, you know, young kid, and I saw uh, a clipping of uh, Teddy Pendergrass, uh -huh. and he had this concert, and all these females screaming and hollering, and my aunties were in the back, and oh, Teddy, oh, Teddy. <laughs> and my grandmother was like, shut up all that noise. So then I like, I want to do just what this guy doing. And, and from that day, Teddy Pendergrass was the, it just opened my eyes. It was so so, so was, was Teddy Pendergrass one of the soul singers? One of the soul singers. Anyone definitely. else, if you could ask uh, help you got, with this one? We got Barry White. Uh -huh. We have um, another one, one of the greatest is, for me, I, I love Bobby Womack. Gotcha, yeah. You know, James England, all these kind of guys, Mr. Nice. Vandross, and it goes on and on. I just, I, I really got a great appreciation for those type of voices because uh -huh. You know, they're so melodic in terms of, and it's colorful, and they got very, very deep tones, you mm. know, which you don't really hear that often nowadays. Well, what I want to do, I want to get into an, another track, really, from, uh, from your album, from your forthcoming one, shall I say, um, and it's called, uh, what I could actually say, it's called The Soul Intentions. Now, the one you're actually hearing underneath me at the moment, that's another one, isn't it? And yes. This one's called uh, Strict Strangers, isn't it? Ah, uh, Searching. Searching. Near, I was nearly there, and I had an essay somewhere, <laughs> because I'm actually playing in the background, and uh, not quite looking at the title, but loving it. I'm trying to hide it up, but uh, enough talk, let's get into this one. Okay. Okay? Just loving it for our Wednesday afternoon, colourful drive time, joined in the studio by Freddie Lee. So what do you think of his voice then? I think it's absolutely cracking. Another track taken from his uh, soon to arrive album called My Soul Intentions, and that track is simply entitled Searching. So uh, you like this one as well, obviously you sang it, so uh, <laughs> you're nodding away and kind of lip sync to it as well as it's going along. Do love it, I just love your voice. Thank now, you. what, now what I want to do is uh, again touch back on your, um, your debut album okay. and um, called Beyond... Uh, Beyond comprehension, and um, now there is a much of a poignant story to this one, isn't there? Yes, it is. And uh, so, if you could just share that well with, with me, and of course my list as well, because I, 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 I sort of read about it, mm -hmm. and I really couldn't believe it, and I thought, wow, very inspiring. Okay. And uh, please, if you just explain, okay, to my, to my listeners. what happened basically? I uh, started out in Miami, Florida, with mm -hmm. a gospel group, with a contemporary gospel group named Message. So we had an opportunity to 
traveled ab abroad doing stuff from Temptation, Four Tops, doing mm -hmm. tribute stuff in Spain. And myself and the guys, we had been working together for quite some time, and uh, we got an opportunity then to come over to the UK. I think that was in 1998. Mm -hmm. And then we started a tribute thing here in the UK. But in the midst of all that, all the stuff that was going on, the whole time this was happening, we were trusting one of our supposed to be friends, so-called friend rather, who robbed us, basically stole at least in the neighborhood of 175,000 pounds. Wow. And because of that, I lost my home. I became homeless, and man, I literally didn't have anything. I was living on the street, living out of my car. And how long was this for? Uh, at least a couple of years, man. Wow. The thought for me of being a two days is like, wow, we, oui. you know what I mean? So now with this album, and as I said to you before, um, it's very important and the way it sort of came about, as I said, once again, very, very inspiring and um, just couldn't believe you had the time to actually do it. Well, that was the thing that, you know, writing the, the material was my, a form of escapism for me. Mm -hmm. And it was the very thing that kept me sane because the whole time I was going through this ordeal, I was writing songs. Right. I was singing this song, pouring out my, my emotions and feeling onto paper. Mm -hmm. And every time I start feeling bad and want to do something crazy, mm -hmm. I start writing. And out of that was born Beyond Comprehension. Well, I've actually listened to the album and um, once reading and I said what you actually went through and then listening to the album, I thought um, you can actually sort, sort of hear it. Mm -hmm. And one of the ones that I actually do like is uh, The Way I Found You. Oh, yes. For some reason, I, I just don't know what it was with this particular cut, but just love it. and. Uh, do you like? Is this one of your favorites as well? I love it. I love it too. I love everything on that album. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Well, listen, we're gonna have a taste of this one. I said, uh, I have to admit, this is my favorite. Uh, pal, admit, okay, so oh. just please, just uh, oh. yeah, love it. This one's called "The Way I Found You," taken from the uh, debut album written in 2008. You've heard the story. Now get the album "Beyond Comprehension," Freddie Lee. And it was at that very time in my life that I understood. My purpose for living. Oh yes, I did. And all I can do is think about the way. When you come big, man, just come back here. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 The endorsement. Do you know what I mean? That's brilliant. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. And as I said to you before, and we were talking, the, uh, the album came about through really, of, no, of really no fault of your own, mm -hmm. but these things happen, and from that sort of like adversity that you had, yep. born the album. Exactly. And it's like, a, so you've really got, um, I wouldn't say in a good way, but not in a horrible way, but uh, you've got to say thanks to what happened to you before, because do you think you would have ever done an album? Not if like this. this. Not like not, this. Not like this. Definitely not, not like this. I mean... When you think about doing an album, mm -hmm. what sort of way do you think you would have gone? I mean, I think I would have been in a totally different direction. Totally different. I think because of out of my struggle, yeah, it I, it got the best out of me. Yeah. Because a lot of times, I tell a lot, a lot of times, sometimes our success and, and the things that we have achieved can be the very thing that hold us back. And because I fell so low. Hmm. I had to reach, I mean, really dig, you know, and it was easier to express that because out of, out of the hurt and the pain and the disbelief that someone I've worked for so, with so long could have done that. Hmm. And man, I tell you, it, although it was a bad situation, yeah, like you said, it's something great came out of it. Now, do you still see these people? Do you, do you have any sort of contact of whatsoever? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak to that guy. I, and even if you and if you did have the time to see them, uh, I think your car would veer over to that uh, <laughs> to, to the pavement. And uh, yeah, <laughs> wow. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Now, when you're actually writing this, uh, you're writing the material, how mm -hmm. on earth did from that situation, mm -hmm. and how did it get so, like, sort of picked up upon, for a record company even? What happened is um, I got a meeting with 5 a.m. production, mm -hmm. and I had a track from God knows how long ago, and the song is titled Higher. Right. And actually, it's on there. And, um, it is indeed. And they had an opportunity. We played that first song, and they heard how you're like, oh, my God, man, we're we feeling this. we got to do something with this. And from that, then I went to meeting with the guys on a regular basis, and then I went to showing them all the other songs and said, hey, let's get together and do something. And that's how it all happened. And then afterwards, when it came to the photographs, and the, like the, the photograph on the album, yeah. you're looking 
yeah, you're looking ready, man. That's all I can say. It's like you're, you're looking. I reach. You know what I mean? I'm there. Thank you for that. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Well, you know what I mean? But uh, with the photograph, you even said the guy was the Michael Jackson photograph. Yeah, the, the, the photographer. He was the one that done it. Yeah, Mr. Harrison Funk, which is a very, very dear friend of mine. You know, oftentimes when he come over to to London to, to do his uh, different exhibitions and stuff of all the different. Uh, I mean, so many different people he's photographed. He photographed everybody from James Brown, all of the, the iconic people that you ever seen. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, he's responsible for the, the famous, the famous toes when Michael Jackson was on his toes. You see that? Yeah. That's Harrison. Wait, he was, that, wait, was that him? That's Harrison. So Harrison, he he's taken uh, those photos for for me for this particular album, and they have a big. Uh, uh, expedition, something like that, down in Florida, and here go Freddie Lee amongst mm. Michael Jackson, James Brown. And well, all these this things. is where it's going to come very, very quick. So we haven't got long with you, but I want to know: it's like a, how did you feel? I mean, for one minute, was it? What was the? What was the scale of? What was the time scale of you being homeless to then all of a sudden to this album? Man, you're looking at about two and a half to three years. I was struggling with trying to get, you know, somewhere to, you know, live. But thank, mm -hmm. thank goodness, I was like gigging at hotels and stuff, so it afforded me an opportunity to live on site, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to necessarily have a, a, a place to call my own. Yeah. And from that, man, I just, you know, saved money and got there, got on my feet to get my own place. Yeah. Now, with this album and with your subsequent album, now with the Beyond, really to get people sort of noticing about who you are, mm -hmm. how is this available now? I mean, is it, is it on iTunes? Is it the yeah, usual it, things? It's on iTunes. You can go to iTunes and find Beyond Company Hitch, and you can find it on cdbaby.com, or you can go over to my website, which is www.freddieleepeterkin.com. You can also find uh, the, the other two singles as well, mm -hmm. which is Searching and The Book of Love. And th th with that, you know, you can buy them from CD Baby iTunes, but if you get it from my website, you get my own personal autograph. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And that is... The Beyond Comprehension, freely. You get it from your own personal website mm -hmm. with a signed autograph from yourself. Exactly. Well worth it, I think. And uh, so, yeah, all of that was iTunes or cdbaby.com. Now, what we're going to do, last one really. Now, since you mentioned that track called Higher, that was the first one really for you, wasn't it? Your very first one. The very I, first one. It. We're going to leave with this one, but I must say thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank it's been very entertaining as well as very educational as well. And yeah. I hope everybody out there feels the same way. And please go and get the album. As I said, uh, please, it's, uh, it is an absolute fantastic album. Very gospel orientated, but very uplifting. Mm. And if you heard the story, then you can sort of relate about what's it all about. But I'm going to leave you with this one. It's called Higher. And uh, one of the very first, really, things that was yeah. cut from you, really, isn't it? Exactly. From yeah. the album. You can get this one on the Beyond Comprehension, Freddie Lee. Once again, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you, Brad. Not a problem at all. Thank you, man. Thank, man, thank, thank you. Thank you for the love. Nice, 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 n